Hello there, Ray here, and today guys, we'll be looking at how it's possible to make a gas fireball sit in midair, which is normally impossible, and a anti-wither and dragon chamber, plus much, much more, including some weird glitches that can be done with it. When covering the snapshot changes, I showed it was really easy to make a enderpearl stasis chamber, as well as make a stasis chamber for almost every other projectile. You guys really loved that video, and you asked if I would go into a more in-depth explanation on it. So today, we're going to be answering a lot of those questions. And some of you guys were the lucky ones that actually joined our stream where we were testing this out. If you ever wonder how we figured this stuff out, make sure to watch the full-length videos archived on my Twitch channel. And thanks everyone who joins those streams. It's a lot of fun messing around with this stuff with you guys on the server. And I stream every Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And I would love to see you guys join in. And don't forget to subscribe, guys, as we come across the strangest things during these experiments. Now, there's a lot to go over, but let's take a look at how different projectiles interact with the bubble columns. This is the major change that they made, and now they're heavily affected by the bubble columns, when in some cases they weren't at all. Let's turn on the entity hitboxes so you guys can kind of see stuff moving through the air, and let's just shoot an arrow. First, we got some soul sand here, which is pushing stuff up. Here, we got some magma blocks, which are pulling stuff down. So if I shoot an arrow in here, you should be able to see that, yeah, it pretty much got instantly pulled upwards by these bubble columns. And it lost its forward momentum, so it's just sitting here on top, going up and down. Because the water is pushing it up, but it generally wants to fall down with gravity. And you can see it is a critical hit with those little stars. They stay with it. And at some points when you're underneath of it, it can actually uh, hit you. It's kind of strange, it doesn't hit you all the time. You have to kind of let it fly up really high in order to hit you. And some projectiles are affected by the water more than others. So we throw like an enchanted bottle, we'll see that it doesn't go very far and it automatically gets stuck inside the bubble column. It doesn't actually get projected upwards, it kind of just stalls. It can't go downwards, but it also doesn't go upwards. So it just sits there in the center of the bubble column. Now we take a look at some potions. Potions will go in and then they get caught up and then they end up to the top. But they definitely don't go as far as like the arrow, which has a lot more momentum. We got some other projectiles like snowballs, which you can see they get pretty far, but they do get caught up inside of this. We can also throw an ender pearl in here. What's similar about all these guys is they lose their forward momentum. Now they're only being affected by gravity trying to pull them down. Now some things are not affected by water at all because tridents which are kind of meant to be thrown underneath the water different than like arrows which get pulled by a downwards momentum of water. Tridents can go right on through but notice that they actually sort of get affected by the bubble columns. They still kind of get pulled upwards and then you can see they kind of get pulled downwards by the magma. So it makes it kind of do this uh, roller coaster thing it goes up and then down. But overall water itself doesn't slow it down unlike these projectiles. But some projectiles never lose their forward momentum. This includes small fireballs or large fireballs. The small ones are also known as like fire charges or things that come from blazes. And the large ones are like the ones that come from gas. I got an illustration here. We got a bunch of fire charges and I got a clock here which just turns them on and we're just going to shoot them down into this water here and you can see they are very active. They're moving all about and this is because they are constantly still trying to move in a direction that they were shot. So they were shot downwards but the game gives them slight angles so they kind of go off this direction some go off this way or this way or this way. And even though they eventually come back to the surface because of the bubble columns, there he finally comes, he's going to start kind of drifting according to the momentum he's given. So you can see he's slightly going behind me, slowly inching his way across the bubble columns. He will eventually make it off here. They really don't ever have a perfect shot downwards, but they just stay inside of the bubble columns. And because of this, even if you shoot them downwards like this, with a whole bunch of them, they'll eventually all leave. Now it would be possible to align them so they lose that sideways momentum, so they just go up and down, and we could capture these guys. Now if you guys do remember on Prototech, I captured a bunch of floating gas balls as well as uh, blaze fireballs and even wither skulls back in the day when they used to actually freeze when getting to unloaded chunks. This is how we have a bunch of those floating in our world. But with changes made of 1.9, they will now continue to move with the momentum as soon as they are loaded. So getting them stuck on top of bubble columns is pretty much the best we can do. Now with the magma side, it's pretty simple. Anything that you throw in here will just get pulled down quite drastically. 
and will end up at the very bottom. Now some things are a little strange like fishing bobbers that kind of uh, get stuck in the bubble columns a little bit because these guys normally like to float but they're getting pulled downwards so it's kind of like the opposite of what they want to do. Now there are some other projectiles we didn't take a look at. We got stuff like lingering potions, chicken eggs, eyes of ender, and even fire rockets with crossbows or even just thrown out normally. The linger potions are similar to the throwball potions where they go upwards and some of these potions can be uh, bumped into and actually break but there you go we kind of have to be in a weird spot in order to break them or the potion itself has to be like high enough so it can actually hit you there you go so it looks like i had to be kind of quite a bit lower in order for it to get hit the eggs kind of work like snowballs where they get caught up and they bounce on top and we got eyes of ender which completely ignore liquids and they just kind of do their own little thing and fly off to the stronghold. Now rockets are kind of special because like if you place them on the ground they want to go upwards right? If you place them here on the magma you think they would want to go upwards but they get pulled downwards. But they're really just not affected by the bubble columns. And you can also put the rockets inside of a crossbow. If you put them in your offhand the game will know that you want to put that type of projectile inside of it. You can see the rockets even pointing out of it. And if we launch this, you can see it goes right through the water, really not affected at all. And we go ahead and charge a crossbow with the arrow. Go ahead and shoot it through. Yeah, the arrows get caught up, but the rockets, they seem like they go right on through. But instead of having a really large body of wire like this to capture all your projectiles, especially enderpearls, you can make an enderpearl stasis. I went ahead and designed this simple one up after the new snapshot. It's only three blocks of water and you just stand down here, aim at the edge of the water and throw whatever you want. You stick in there so you can throw like chicken eggs, potions go in there, ender pearls, all the typical stuff that we tested over there will also work here. You can even put arrows into this thing or arrow in there and you can launch your arrow also from a bow as long as you're aiming at the edge of water it will get stuck let's take a look at everything that's in there holy muggers let's turn off hitboxes so you can kind of see what's in there there's a lot of stuff in there and just like how we've seen over there the bottle of enchanting kind of gets stuck midway but the setup's pretty simple we just got a wall here you just push yourself up against it then you get that soul sand which makes the water push everything upwards Aim at the edge of the water. You don't have to be too precise. When you do throw stuff, the game will kind of randomize it. You just throw straight up. There's a chance that your ender pearl will come straight back down. And then, of course, above the soul sand, we got those three blocks of water. I got walls in here so you can click through it without hitting it. Got some walls to contain the water. And also made a on and off switch here. So if I flick the switch, everything that's here at the top should hit these trap doors. Yeah. <laughs> that was pretty cool. So everything went off with the potions, the arrows, ender pearls, the chickens, it all did its thing, except for the chanting bottle, which is still kind of stuck down here in the water. So that's pretty cool. So you can actually hook this up to a redstone mechanic to activate your ender pearls. So it's like a little teeny mini ender pearl stasis chamber. And you can have one of these for every person on your server. Once you flick those, it just teleports you. Now the same stuff that didn't really work over there doesn't work over here. So I want to see if we can actually stop a trident even with a lot of bubble columns. So I got a bunch of water here which is going upwards and I'm just going to throw a trident in and you can see yeah the trident goes right all the way to the bottom and sticks into it. The momentum from the trident is greater than the bubble column so it eventually makes it to the bottom even if it goes a little slower. I also wanted to try rockets in this big huge column. Yeah they go right to the bottom and hit the bottom. So besides projectiles being changed they also change the way they interact with different blocks in the game. Now in the past stuff like snowballs would not be able to go through fence gates but stuff like potions would. Let's see how stuff interacts with different projectiles. Let's try projectiles going through like these vines which do kind of slow down the player. The player can't go through them very easily and it seems like pretty much everything can go right on through with no problem. And in the past most projectiles were able to go through stuff like this. When it comes to cobwebs, you can see now snowballs go right through them with no problem. Where in the past they did, same thing for uh, like gates here, go right through them. And other projectiles follow the same rules. So we should be able to just test it with snowballs and see if it collides with anything. Seems like anything that the player doesn't really collide with also doesn't affect the snowball. Here's some vines that go right through it. Uh, scaffolding has a weird hitbox on the edges. Probably can hit here. No, it doesn't hit there. It can hit on top. Oh, okay, yeah. So the top of the scaffolding is something that it can hit, but it can't hit underneath. So I can 
throw a potion this direction, that works just fine. But if I throw a potion this direction, it hits on top. So it's kind of like a one-way valve. You also like shoot arrows through the top of it. There it goes. But nobody can shoot arrows down at you. But it does seem like everything else goes right through it. Now there are some special cases like tripwire. Projectiles can now go through it, but you can see it also activates it. So you, we can actually detect this. We can tell if a projectile goes through it without actually interfering with it. Now before we had used a trick by test where we would put an entity above the tripwire, which would update it so we could detect when entities pass near it, even though they didn't interfere with the actual tripwire. Now we also have another special case, which is fire. If we throw stuff through fire, it catches on fire. You can see that snowballs on fire. Pretty much anything you shoot through it. Here are some arrows. Arrows are on fire. The question is, if these projectiles look like they're on fire, are they actually on fire? So we got a test here where we have a zombie. We got some lava, which is a source of fire. And then over here we have a dispenser with some fireworks in it. So if we push it, it will go through and actually collides with the zombie. It did do some damage. So let's switch this out instead of the damaging fireworks. Let's just put in some normal ones. If we launch it, it looks like they get kind of stuck in the lava. Let's just remove the zombie for now. We'll see what it looks like without the zombie. Yeah, so it goes right on through and is on fire. Let's move the zombie over here so we can kind of see the rocket leaving. Yeah, it seems like it actually stops right here, but it must hit the zombie. And it doesn't start on fire, so let's try a different projectile. We got some bottles of enchanting. Nope, some regen potions. Also on fire, but regen doesn't actually affect undead mobs. And I can prove this. Here's the zombie's current health. It's 2.2. And if we throw regen at him, his health is still 2.2. So it doesn't work like poison or anything. Right, eggs. The eggs actually showed like to damage him, but I put a new zombie in there and he still has a total of 20 hearts. Snowballs are the same, where they look like they damage him, but they really don't. Now let's try arrows, because that's typically what's used when you're trying to start something on fire. That one hit him. Yeah, so that one did catch him on fire. But oddly enough, all the other projectiles do not catch stuff on fire unless they're fire charges. Now besides the string, which is unique, we also got pressure plates, which can be put on really teeny blocks like this iron bar. And if anything touches the edges, it will activate. And let's throw some projectiles through. So the trident that activated it, uh, fishing rod, arrows, that's all working. Let's try snowballs. Snowballs don't seem to activate it. Wonder, are they hitting on it? Oh, there it goes. Just gotta hit it very precisely. Let's try potions. Also worked. Eggs. Yes. And ender pearl should also activate it. Cool. Let's try fireworks. Seem to also activate it. Now, besides these weird cases, there's also some other strange cases, which includes having a piercing for crossbow. The piercing is a enchantment that allows arrows to hit multiple mobs or entities before the arrow itself is absorbed. Usually if you shoot something with the arrow, it gets kind of absorbed into the mob and you don't get it back. But the piercing will allow it to hit the number on the level plus one. The piercing four will let you hit five entities. Let's see if we can get this piercing arrow to get stuck inside of this bubble column here. But before we do that, let's get rid of this arrow and uh, this potion here. So strange how they don't always hit on stuff, but it seems like they hit on blocks very easily. Since crossbows are so strong, you kind of have to shoot them from very far away in order to get them stuck in there. So that arrow did get in there, but it bounced all the way through and ended up over here. I'm trying to get stuck inside of this thing, so we gotta go farther back. Okay, I think I got her. So it is stuck there just barely on the edge, just like last time. So what's special about this arrow, it is a piercing arrow. That means this arrow should be able to hit five things before it actually gets destroyed. So let's put a skeleton in there and let's see if it gets hit one time. And even after I got hit once, the arrow is still considered charged, which means it is a critical hit when it does hit something. There, I got hit again. Ah, oh, we got a third hit out of it. The arrow is still there. Fourth hit. I think I hit him and yeah, I removed the arrow. So I think I got five hits out of that one arrow. So that is one kind of cool thing you can do with it. You can save the arrow and kind of push the different mobs into it. Probably do a little better setup of pushing the arrow over and dropping it onto the mob. Now you can't just like place the arrow inside of a block or on top of a block and then just remove the block so that it will hit the next entity. So if I do like arrow right there and I drop it down, as soon as it hits the first guy, it vanishes. It doesn't like stick into any other block. 
doesn't continue falling down, hit these guys. Uh, something strange is you do get one of these piercing arrows and you shoot them through like two entities even though there's blocks behind it. Arrow can actually go right on through the blocks and you can see the arrow actually ended up right here. Now you can't pick these arrows back up similar to like infinity arrows if you're in survival. But when it comes to dealing with fireballs from gas, normally they don't stay nice and steady like this one does. This is one that I just summoned in. It doesn't have any momentum. The gas fireballs I said are very similar to like the small fireballs which would constantly try to pop off of the edge of this water and continue flying the direction they started. But during the snapshot where they added this feature in, I show it's possible to actually get some items to sit in kind of a null where they're between a upwards going bubble column and a downwards going bubble column. And because they're kind of in between, the game doesn't know if they should go up or down. So they sit right here in the center. And this is actually an arrow. And the way I did this is you kind of stand in a certain spot here and you shoot and you'll get lucky. So there was two lows. If I go back a little ways. There, okay, that one got stuck. You kind of say it went upwards a little bit and then it just got stuck here. So by using this, we can actually catch different projectiles, even ones that are very difficult to handle, like gas fireballs, kind of between two situations. And that's what we did over here. Uh, we did a lot of testing and we eventually got to work. And it's actually one of you guys, the viewers, that suggested that we try to capture a fireball in a stasis chamber. Let me tell you, it was very difficult. I think we did a five hour live stream of just us playing around with this. Let's go ahead and show it off. So you just will be up here and you'll be in survival mode. Let's hop down in here. You need to be at the same level as the gas or lower for him to be able to see you. The change made uh, to gas. You can see he's trying to shoot at me. But if you just come over to the edge, he won't hit you. So this is the part where you want to aim straight downwards and just spam your mouse clicking. And just like that, you can get a fireball stalled. So now it's stuck in this kind of state where it's not moving and at any point you want to come by and you can launch it just by clicking on it. You can shoot it whatever way you want to. So now I'll show you guys with the replay mod so you kind of see what's all going on in slow mode. And here you should be able to see you and you aim downwards and click really fast. You can see how the fireball crosses the soul sand as well as the magma and it kind of gets pushed upwards by the soul sand gets pulled down by the magma and by the time it reaches the player it slowed up quite a bit but the player is able to punch it back down in between the two of them and that's where it gets stuck. Now we were able to get this to work with a lot less water but it wasn't as consistent. But having just a little more water it made it pretty much 100% reliable. And the gas is sitting over here inside of a minecart but you can trap the gas in other ways. I also put a little roof on top of the gas in case you accidentally shoot the fireball over here you don't kill the gas. But it's still possible for you to somehow accidentally hit it. Now if you don't aim straight down when you're hitting this fireball uh, what happens is it will do the same thing like the fire charges where it just constantly creep along the edge and will escape the area so it's like really important to hit precisely it doesn't move even the slightest bit in any direction now you could use this as some type of like cannon where you get a bunch of ammunition for your cannon and then you move it around so the player can launch them if you make an open area like this up here you should be able to launch it pretty much any direction the most annoying part is going down here and getting his attention so once you get him shooting at you you just want to aim straight downwards and click really fast and there you go, a fireball is here. Now, even though it looks like it's right there with the hitbox, it's pretty much a lot bigger than that. So if you click anywhere around this area, just try to like break a block or anything, you're most likely going to activate it. Let's see, if I just click over here, yeah, you can see I send it off. So yeah, you can make an easy turret like this and get fireballs up here and shoot them. Now the setup isn't too complicated. Everything above this and even this, this is all water sources all the way up to the top here. You got some blocks holding it in. The gas is definitely gonna be the hardest to get, but you can use like my mini underload to get gas over into the overworld. Of course, this does use the overworld because of the water and bubble columns. You guys might be wondering what happens if we remove the bubble columns down here. So I'm gonna switch it to stone and you can see the fireball still wants to go the direction which it was pushed. So when I was up here pushing the fireball downwards, it always wants to go that way, but it couldn't because of the bubble columns. But after we removed them, it just keeps going that direction. And this is just like the fire charges. 
Now, unlike the fire charges, we can actually punch the gas fireballs. Uh, these things, we can't actually do that. Because we can't punch and redirect her in any way. But those are not all the projectiles in the game. The dragon himself shoots off a special projectile. And it's called a dragon fireball. And this is what it looks like. And these are unlike gas fireballs. You can't redirect them. If I would summon in a... So I summon in a fireball. You can see these can be redirected. But are these affected by bubble columns? So we got a test here. We got a lot of bubble columns. And I'm going to place the player in the center here. See if the dragon will shoot at us. Oh yeah, that fireball definitely got redirected. <laughs> I think I'm like safe in here from fireballs. The next thing I'd like to test is a wither. The wither's in place. I'm down here in the bubble columns. You should be able to see me. <laughs> fireballs are still trying to get shot at me. Try to shoot me, but <laughs> it it looks like it definitely reflects the uh, wither skulls. Um, probably both the blue ones and the black ones. So I'm pretty safe in here other than... I need to be able to breathe. That answers our question. It does work for both the Wither and the Ender Dragon. So a pretty cool anti-aerial attack for both the Wither and the Dragon. I can definitely see this being used for different things. And now the Wither is mad at the Ender Dragon. There you can see a blue one hopping across. I really had a lot of fun looking into this. I hope you guys enjoyed this video as well. So make sure to go ahead and share it with others as well as leave a like on it. If you'd like to look at this world in more detail, I'll provide the link in the description. But I'd like to thank you guys for watching and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.